The Orlando Magic rally for a win, but the big takeaway is one of the best stories about the Orlando Magic isn't just a nice story anymore. It's time to talk realistically about one Markel Fultz. It's time for a Sunday edition of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is March 19th, 2023. My name is Philip Rosreich. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily. Come and follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic rally for a big, very needed win at the LA Clippers. Huge win on this road trip. We'll talk about that game. Plus, Markel Fultz is no longer just a nice story. We have to get into that. We'll get to that coming up here in just one. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. The Orlando Magic's game against the LA Clippers on Saturday was one that could have gone a million different directions. One that could have really gone off the rails. It could have been a glorious win. It could have been a bad loss. It could have just been just one of those games. And especially with the way the Magic have been playing lately, um, the losses are starting to pile up. Time is starting to run out in the season. It has started to feel like this team, this group, this young group, hasn't been up for the challenge of trying to make the play in tournament, of trying to make this last push. And, you know, there's certainly a section of the fan base that has conceded that part of of things. And look, even I will be realistic and say that, yes, it is very unlikely that the Orlando Magic make the postseason this year. And and, and I'm not going to be upset about that. I'm not going to be angry about that. It's it as I've said repeatedly. It's not about making it. It's not about success or failure. And making it, it's about the attempt. It's about going through these games, feeling the pressure, and yes, feeling like these losses matter. That's what is important here. But this is a Magic team that does not give up. It's a team that we've seen throughout the course of the season be resilient and fight back. And so, after the Orlando Magic gave away their lead and gave away their chance to pull away and and win this thing easily after leading the entire first half, the Magic found themselves down by eight entering the fourth quarter. They found themselves in the trickiest and most difficult of holes for a young team. A a game that honestly felt like it was a repeat of the loss to Phoenix, of, of so many losses before where, yes, Orlando fights really, really hard, but their mistakes, their lack of experience, their lack of poise, and frankly, maybe even their lack of depth sometimes, keeps them from getting over the hump, keeps them from accomplishing this goal and and taking that important next next step. That's not what happened, though. And and, and there's a lot of guys that that stepped up big time in this game, whether it was Cole Anthony, whether it was Wendell Carter Jr., whether it was Franz Wagner, or whether it's the guy that we need to talk a lot more seriously about. And that's Markel Fultz. The Magic won this game because of the contributions of a lot of players. So I I, I don't mean to ignore their contributions. We'll talk about them a little bit more when we talk, when we run through the box score. I don't mean to minimize those contributions or ignore them completely. However, Markel Fultz is making a huge name for himself. Markel Fultz is proving himself to be something more and, and something worth developing and, 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 and something that is not unexpected, but still surprising and heartwarming. We all know the trials and tribulations that Markel Fultz has had to go through. We all know the work he's had to put in to get just to this level, to get to this spot. 
we all know that Fultz has, frankly, a, a lot of baggage in some respects on him. We didn't know what we were going to get. We didn't know what we were going to have. And, and at each time, each offseason, each opportunity he goes out there to deliver, we see hints of the player who was the number one pick, even though we know, perhaps, he's not going to quite reach those promises. And, and it would be insane to think so with, with all the things that he's had to go through. And yet, we see games like Saturday afternoon's game much more often from him. Markel Fultz scored a career-high 28 points. He scored some of the most important baskets and made some of the most important plays of the game. It's not just that he's able to get to the basket and finish with creativity and touch around the basket. It's not just that he gets in the lane, he gets to his spots, he hits his mid-range jumper, and defenses don't seem to know what to do with him. It's not that he's willing to shoot threes and making them at a better clip than you think even though defenses are certainly very, very happy to let him continue to shoot at, shoot there. It's not any of this. It's not even his strong defense, which, again, no one's really talking about. It's the consistency at which these games are occurring. And frankly, the regularity that these games are happening. The regularity that Markel Fultz is making such a big impact on this team, for this team. Since the All-Star break, Markel Fultz is averaging 17.5 points per game, shooting 53.8% floor, 33.3% from beyond the arc, 90% from the foul line on 3.3 attempts per game, and then adding 5.8 assists per game, uh, along with 1.8 steals per game for good measure. It's plays like he made late in this game when he came from behind and blocked a Vivica Zubas layup at a critical juncture of the game. It's plays like Wendell Carter blocking a shot, getting it out to Markel Fultz in transition, and seeing Fultz go all the way down, hitting the afterburners and finishing the layup in a big spot. It's Fultz knowing when to slow the game down, get, get that mid-range jumper, or get others involved. It's having a true point guard. And while, yes, I, I, I will be a little critical of Fultz and say sometimes he kind of loses focus and wanders around a little bit, but this is still a player who is making a humongously positive impact on this team. This is a player whose potential is clearly visible and clear for everybody to see. This is a player that is much more than whatever low expectations everybody has for him. Marco Fultz has been doing this all year. For Magic fans, what we're seeing this last week, week and a half, preview for Monday's episode there, um, what we've been seeing over this last week or week and a half isn't new, isn't surprising. For a nation, and again, a, an afternoon game against the Clippers, even on an NCAA tournament day, for, for a nation that hasn't watched a lot of Markel Fultz, seeing him play this way is new, is something different, is something unexpected. But this is who Markel Fultz has been all year long. And what we're seeing now is a Markel Fultz who is confident, comfortable, and playing the most sustained basketball he's played since the 2020 season, at least. And probably since his days in college. This is what happens when you let Markel Fultz get into a rhythm. This is what happens. This is what Markel Fultz looks like when he's had some time to get his legs under him, to get that second win, to get that rhythm of the season down. Someone who is free from all injury encumbrances and is playing really, really well. I know I've sat here and said this before on the pod because we've dealt with so many ACL injuries. It, it usually takes a full year to recover from an ACL injury to get back on the court. It then takes another year for you to get yourself all the way back skill-wise, timing-wise, everything-wise. We are past that year. At the point that we hit that year mark since Mark L. Fultz returned to the court, we've seen his play simply take off. Again, 17.5 points per game really speaks, says it all. And while, yeah, there are still a lot of things that this team needs to work out, and sure, plenty of questions about where Fultz ultimately fits, he is making his case as strong as possible 
that he is just getting started. As, as my colleague Luke Duffy wrote on OrlandoMagicDaily.com in the wake of this game, Fultz deserves some mention and some appreciation for Most Improved Player of the Year. I would agree with that. I think that is 100% true. But the reality is, the bigger picture, the bigger story, is that Marco Fultz isn't just some nice little comeback story anymore. He isn't just like, oh... The former number one overall pick figured out his role. He found his place, and he's contributing nicely within that role. I, I, I think we got to start talking about Markel Fultz in different terms. Markel Fultz knows there's a lot on the line this season. He's extension eligible this offseason. His contract expires at the end of next season. He's looking for his place in the league. And he is very much establishing himself once again, in this league. Establishing where he sits in this league. And making, and planting his flag as the point guard of this team's future. Markel Fultz is not just a comeback story anymore. This is a story of progress and development. And it's been exciting to watch come to fruition. We're going to go through the final box score real fast to close out today's quick episode. We'll talk about, we'll go through that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends at Prize Picks. Sunday is the last day of the NCAA tournament, second round. We all know your brackets are busted, but you still love watching the games anyway. So get involved in the action. Get involved with the games by putting together a little prize picks. You got the Magic playing late at night. You've got, uh, obviously, college basketball. UCF is playing Sunday night. You've got MLB getting ready to get going. You've got PGA at the Valspar in Tampa. There's a lot going on. Prize picks get, can take care of your sports day for you. Here's how the game works. You pick two to six players, and if they go on to score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Be- entry. Believe that Keontae George is going to hit 15 and a half points. Take, take that over. Take that. Say that he'll score more than 15 and a half points. Believe that Markel Fultz is going to match his 28-point game. I don't think the prize picks projection has him at 28 points, but... Look, with the way Markel Fultz is playing, that over that more looks really, really good right now. Put that in your player pool. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus projections available. And Prize Picks again offers projections on any sport you watch, including NBA, MLB, PGA, college basketball, men's and women's, as well as soccer and plenty more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They have safe and fast fast withdrawals. They're currently operational in more than 30 states and Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports today. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic defeat the LA Clippers 113 to 108. Like I said, just a a really, honestly, this was a really fantastic game from the Magic. And and, and we'll we'll get, we talked a little bit about Fultz. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a minute. Um, But this was really a team effort and and a team game. And and I think the Magic deserve a lot of credit uh, for the the way they defended. They deserve a lot of credit for the energy they brought to the game. They deserve a lot of credit for their resiliency and their ability to fight back. And yeah, they deserve a lot of credit for the way they closed this one out. I, I was skeptical that they were going to be able to close this one out with all the effort they put in to get back in the game. But they made every play down the stretch. They made their final six shots of the game, put this game away, even with the Clippers having Paul George and making some big shots down the stretch. Orlando answered the call at every turn. Just, just an awesome game from Orlando in so many ways. Orlando shoots 50% from the floor, just 10 for 31 from beyond the arc, and 19 for 25 from the foul line. So again, the three-point shooting is about their normal. Free throws were a little bit lower than normal. Paolo Bencaro was just four for nine from the foul line. Uh, But Orlando just does a really good job just scrambling and and being present. Uh, LA shot 46.7% from the floor, six for 22 from beyond the arc. They have 13 offensive rebounds, seven of them from Ivica Zubas. They only get six. They only get sixteen second chance points off those thirteen offensive rebounds, and, and to me, that's a credit to the effort the Magic put in, the the amount of energy and, and and force they put in. Look, 
Defense is, you know, a lot of scheme, but it's a lot of effort. You can have the greatest defensive scheme in the world, but if your players do not play with the effort and intensity they need, it's not going to matter. The Magic played a really strong defensive scheme, but it put them out of position for offensive rebounds a lot. They got themselves back in position. They made Ivica Zubasa's life hard, made it difficult for him to finish a lot of those shots that he got around the basket, deflected shots, deflected pass outs, got steals. They, they were just active, and they knew they weren't perfect. They didn't have to be perfect, but they played with effort and intention, and, and that got them over the finish line. Orlando forces 15 turnovers for 13 points. They commit 18 for 23. That was one of the biggest weaknesses for the Magic in this game. But overall, Orlando was just super, 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 super active, and, and that's a big reason why they were able to win this game, outscoring LA 39-26. to 26. Again, effort and intention go a long way, and we got to start with Markel Fultz, 28 points, career high, 10 for 17 shooting, 1 for 2 from deep, 7 for 8 from the foul line, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, and a block, so 5 stocks in the game. Um, he was just everywhere on both sides. He controlled the pace really well, got to his spots well, made his jump, stepped into his jumper. This was as good as we've seen Markel Fultz play, and we've seen him play some really good games. We know what his impact can be. He just played exceptionally well and and, and and just a, a really solid game. But I would be remiss if we just made this all about Marco Fultz, as good as he was. Wendell Carter was also fantastic. 27 points, 11 for 19 shooting, 4 for 8 from deep, 12 rebounds for him. Did a great job following following shots for putbacks, had a couple of big putback dunks. Two blocks, did a great job sticking to Evita Zubas. Yeah, he got beat on a few rebounds. Yeah, Zubas got rebounds when Carter was pulled out of position. Carter and the Magic always recovered. They always surrounded him. They always made that those putbacks difficult, made it difficult for him to finish, and, and that, that just, that's just half the battle. It's just the effort was there completely. Franz Wagner, a solid game as well, 20 points, 7 for 13 shooting, 2 for 7 from deep, so most of his misses were from deep. Able to get in the paint, able to get to the basket, able to hit those flip shots that he's really good at. He's, he's, found, his, he's found his second win this season. We're starting to see him pick up his play. He had a really strong run through the first half. And then hit this just this absolute dagger of a step back with a little bit less than a minute to play. Just a fan, just a, just a, a great kind of, you know, frankly ballsy shot on a step back three with that, with that in that situation. Gave the magic a five-point lead. Um, just a, a humongous shot. He, he's never been afraid of the moment. That's always been his thing, and, and he continues to play at an extremely high level. Cole Anthony off the bench with 18 points. Only 20 points scored off the bench. Anthony had 18 of them. So that was part of the problem for Orlando, why they gave up the lead in the second quarter. But Anthony has seven of his 18 points in the fourth quarter. He is a humongous reason why. Him and Franz Wagner are a big reason why the Magic were able to erase an eight-point deficit heading into the fourth quarter uh, and to make plays down the stretch. Um, Anthony's just Anthony's really found his sweet spot. Seven for 14 shooting, three for three from the foul line, eight rebounds in this game, one for four from deep. I don't. I really like where how Anthony chooses his shots. His shot selection and his shot decision making have been a lot better. He's got this nice little floater. Got this nice little game around the basket. He's he knows how to kind of get himself there. Um, he's really patient. He's really kind of figured out the pace of the game real well. You don't see him sped up a ton. Um, you know, yes, sometimes he gets a little three point happy, but honestly, he's at his best when he is a three point threat, but not necessarily a three point shooter. Um, because he's, his mid-range game is so good. His pull-up game from mid-range is so good. I don't mind him taking those shots. And, and, and honestly, we're getting to a point where you can really trust his decision-making uh, in this in those situations. Paolo Bancaro, just 12 points, 4 for 11 shooting. Really struggled to shoot 4 for 9 from the foul line. 6 rebounds, but 6 assists for him. He's starting to make some really nice passes. Nose defenses are coming after him. Nose defenses are loading up on him. Uh, his best stuff in this game... Camry was trying to get to the basket, get to the foul line. That's still when he's at his best, when he has the determination to drive, can isolate guys, draw fouls, get to the foul line. That's when Paolo Bancaro's at his best. The three-point shot's going to come, the mid-range shot's going to be there, but he's at his best getting to the basket, and I, and I think it's really important that he always remembers that. The Magic, again, out win the game 113-108, 18 turnovers, 23 points. The LA Clippers led in scoring by Paul George, Paul George uh, with 30 points, 12 for 25 shooting. I, honestly, I, you know, George got himself going. He hit some tough shots, got some and ones, um, you know, that you would expect from him. But I thought the Magic did a really good job. Limited him just four free throws. Um, I thought the Magic really made him work for his shots. You know, he he missed he missed his share, fair share, two of seven from deep. I thought Orlando just was was really solid on him. Credit goes to Franz Wagner. I thought he did a great job defensively on him. 
uh, for most of the evening. Yeah, Paul George is going to get his sometimes, but uh, I thought that was about as good as a 30-point game defensive effort as you can give. Um, Russell Westbrook, only 14 points. Marcus Morris, 13. Evicius Zubat, 16 points, 16 rebounds, 7 offensive rebounds. That was kind of the big blemish on the Magic record, but they are able to overcome that. The Orlando Magic were far from perfect, didn't play the greatest game they've ever played, but a solid effort nonetheless, and they defeat the LA Clippers 113 to 108. This being a weekend edition, that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts that you're tuning in Himway, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places on podcasts to your podcast enable listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out uh, be, be sure to check out the Game to Game NBA podcast. You can find that coming up on Monday when they pick back up Monday through Friday. You can check that out wherever you download podcasts. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Ross from Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.